Hello everyone, Lisa here, and I'm back with another Flashpoint tutorial because Flashpoint 13 no longer works. Alright, so first we're going to want to go to the Flashpoint website. We're going to want to click on Download Flashpoint. I have tried the installer for this in the Steam Deck and it does not work. It goes a fair bit and then just stops, so zip copy it is. And I'm just going to save that to my Downloads folder. Might take a second for it to download here. Alright, there we go. Now I'm in the Downloads folder. I have this zip file here. I'm going to right click. I just go over here, click on Extract, and select Extract here. Just gotta wait for the files to finish extracting. Alright, there we're done. Alright, go over here to the Launcher folder. There's this little Flashpoint.exe file. You're gonna want to right click on this bad boy, and select Add to Steam. Now I'm gonna open up Steam. I'm gonna have two just because I've already done this before. If you find yourself in this situation, it's usually the bottom one that's the newest one. So I'll click on that, go over here to Manage, and select Properties. Now go down to Compatibility, check this box, and make sure you select Proton Experimental. If you don't have that option, you can just use a different version of Proton, but I prefer the Experimental. Alright, just click on Play. And this should actually open up the Windows launcher for Flashpoint, which is really cool because I've never ever gotten this launcher to work properly. And they now have ruffle support, so I just kind of hit OK. Enable all, I really don't care. And I'm going to go over here to update. And I'm going to wait for all of the updates to finish. You just love it when it's 100% complete, but there's no finish button. Okay, there we go. Update complete. And now we have other updates. So I got this new install software update button at the bottom. So it's going to open up here in this box. And I'm not really sure why these have to be installed outside of the launcher, but I just go ahead and do that just to be safe. I was worried this wouldn't work on the Steam Deck, but fortunately I haven't had any issues in any of my testing. Alright. There we go. Everything is up to date, so we can go ahead and relaunch Flashpoint. Click on Games, and let's try this one. Yep, seems to play just fine. Let's try a Shockwave game. Yeah, that one seems to be working just fine so far. Sex. Uh, oh yeah, space break. Let's try a Unity game. Alright, so this is what happens when you try to launch a Unity game. This is the same exact issue we had in Flashpoint 11, by the way. But, much like in the other tutorial, there is a workaround for that. Now, if you are like me and you like having various shortcuts for your games, I recommend downloading Cliff. It's a free alternative launcher for Flashpoint. I'm just going to go and download the latest Windows Static version. I'm just going to go ahead and extract this. We can delete these zip files, don't need them anymore. Head over to the bin folder. Now, I'm not sure exactly what this one does, but really all you need is this one right here. And you just paste it into the folder. And then all you gotta do is, much like with the launcher, just right click and add to Steam. Just gonna want to search for it. And again, I've already done this, so that's why I have two. Go for the bottom one. Go to properties here. Make sure the compatibility is checked. And it's set to Proton Experimental. 
and here's where you can type in your command play dash t t represents title you can also do play dash i which is id if you know the id for the game you can paste that in there most people are going to go by title title it tends to work, but it can be unreliable where you have multiple things with similar titles. Mm. Oh. Right, there we go. So yeah, it looks like there are a few different matches. Cause like I said, it's not an exact science when you use the name. Alright, so if you want to be sure you have the exact name of your game right, or the ID, you can actually use this little search tool. So in my case, I'm just going to look up color fill and see what it says. We got original color fill here, and this is the ID right here. So since I'm having some trouble with the name, I'm just going to copy this ID, head back over to Steam. Click on that gear, go to properties. I'm gonna change this dash T to a dash I. It looks weird, but that is a lowercase I, by the way. And I'm just gonna paste this ID. Okay, cool. Seems to be working now. And there we go. That's my game. Awesome. Alright, so in my last Flashpoint tutorial, I introduced a workaround for Unity. This is going to work exactly the same way. So, since Flashpoint 13 is no more, I do recommend downloading the Frankenstein version, because that is still up on my Google Drive, and that is Flashpoint 13. So I'm going to go ahead and download the Frankenstein. Alright, so I'm going to go ahead and extract this. Alright, and I'm also going to download the Unity scripts I created as well. And this is the close one. So now you should have an extracted version of the Frankenstein edition. A closed script and an open script. We don't need this. Alright, go ahead and right click on those. Open with Kate or whatever text editor you like to use. Now we're going to need to edit this open script. So to do that, minimize that, go over to the Frankenstein edition and we're going to make sure that this is executable. Right click, go to Properties, Permissions, make sure this box is checked. And then right click and Add to Steam. If it's not checked, that Add to Steam option will not be there. So just make sure it is. Now we're gonna head back over to Steam, go to our library, and we're gonna search for Flashpoint. We're looking for this start flashpoint script. I'll go over here. I'm gonna go to manage. I'm gonna add a desktop shortcut. Alright. And now this part is important because even though I have two entries with the exact same name, Steam, very much like Flashpoint, has unique IDs for each entry. So what I'm gonna do is open this desktop shortcut in Kate. That's going to give us our unique game ID for Steam. I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Go over to the open script. Hover over this part of the command. Paste it. So this will be different. That will save. And we don't need to do anything to this. Alright, so now we're going to go back over to our cliff. properties and we're gonna modify this. So I'm gonna go over to the downloads folder. I'm gonna right click on this open script and select copy location. 
head back over here to steam. Can get rid of all of this. If there are any spaces in the path, you will probably want to use quotation marks like this. With my path, there are no spaces whatsoever, so I can just paste it in without. And then we're going to need a semicolon, space, percent, command, percent, space. I come over here to the close script, click, copy location, and then I'm going to put it in quotation marks, paste it, and quote, semicolon. So, it should look like this, path of the first script, semicolon, percent, command, percent, path of the second script, semicolon. Oh, actually... The percent command percent also needs a semicolon. All right, so next we're gonna have to edit this target. So how it's gonna work is you're going to type in play in single quotes, space, dash T or dash I, doesn't matter, also in single quotes. And then your title has to be in double quotes. So for me, I'll go bent in ultimate crisis, Sure it's spelt correctly because it is very picky. Should do it. Gotta make sure these boxes are checked on the script as well. Otherwise, nothing will happen when you try to run these. Okay, so you'll see it's starting. As you can see, the Linux launcher came up here, the old one. And just like magic, Unity works. Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys found it helpful. And if you have any questions, please let me know in the comments down below.